It is a good thing to switch things up a little bit sometimes, and I said I was going to possibly put somebody else in center field for maybe a game or two just to get Crawford out of there because, man, he is probably drained being at the top of the order. He has been for months. So I also got Andre Dawson when I was trying to get the Billy Wagner too. So somebody tell me this. How in the fuck is this guy not a diamond? Literally, like, how is this? You go look at that 95 Ian Kinsler and you go look at other diamonds who are like 95, 94 overalls. And you tell me how they are better than this 92 overall Andre Dawson. That does not make any sense to me. This guy is actually a beast. The hitting stats versus righties aren't, aren't you know, crazy or anything. But I've seen guys like Ian Kinsler and those guys. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. But there is like 95 overall guys with hitting stats that are way worse than Andre Dawson's. Plus the fielding on that Andre Dawson is amazing. The arm strength is like 97. And his speed is also like 83. How the hell is this guy only a 92? So I'm putting this guy in, see what he could do. Didn't put him in the top of the lineup. I feel like Altuve has been struggling a lot too since I moved him down the lineup because I like batting Mookie in that number two spot. And you could see why right there. This is why I picked up this son of a bitch because he can just drive in runs every two seconds. But since I moved Altuve down to like the number seven spot, I think it was, he has been struggling a lot. So, once I moved Crawford out of the starting lineup, I wanted to move Altuve back up to the starting, or just up to the leadoff spot. And he gets off to, I guess, a pretty decent start. Got a walk, so whenever you get the leadoff guy on base, no matter how it is, it is always good. Plus, his speed is, is pretty fucking good as well, so he needs some speed up at the top of the order. I was thinking about actually leading Mookie off, but I mean, Altuve was doing pretty decent before I even moved him down in the lineup, so I wanted to move him back just to see if he could come out of the gates swinging the bat good in this one. And I need to apologize to everybody too, because you, you, like if you're like me, you are getting sick and tired of seeing Corey Kluber, David Price, and maybe even some other guys, pro mo those guys the most. Corey Kluber, David Price, I feel your pain. I am getting sick and tired of seeing these guys on the mound. I am going to have some stubs to spend in the near future. It's not going to be a crazy amount or anything like that, but I don't even know what I should do if I should just spend it all on bullpen guys because if I do that, I could probably pick up a lot of guys, like a lot of guys in the pen, probably fill out the pen completely. Or if I want to spend it on a starting... Just a guy in the starting rotation, I could probably pick up somebody who's going for around 30000 Maybe just over 30000 or something. I don't even know when Scherzer went up to a 94. But that was a guy I was actually thinking about picking up just for... Just to fill the void and see what he could do. I don't even know how Scherzer is not above a 94, man. Because every single time you see this guy go to the mound, he is always flirting with a fucking no-hitter or some shit in like the 7th inning. So I may pick up like Scherzer or somebody. And I've already had Steven Strasburg. Didn't like that guy at all. And I already had Chris Sale, didn't like him at all either. I think Bumgarner's going for a pretty low price now too. The 94 overall Bumgarner. Even the 99 Bumgarner is only going for like 50-something thousand. So, I don't know. I don't know if I should spend the stubs on a guy in the starting rotation or if I should just spend it all on guys in the pen because I did pick up Billy Wagner, so I got another crazy lefty in the pen. So that is always good. But I don't know, man. Corey Kluber and David Price need to get the fuck out of the start rotation. I am fucking sick and tired of seeing these guys, man. Holy shit, it is pissing me off. Seeing these, just thinking about it is making me want to fucking punch a hole in the wall. Like, every single game, these guys take the mound. Where the fuck is Nolan Ryan? Where the fuck is Jose Fernandez? These guys haven't been on the mound in centuries. I, honest to God, don't even remember the last time Nolan Ryan was on the mound. Fernandez, it might even be the same case. David Price just goes out there and blows leads every two seconds. And fucking Corey Kluber pretty much has been doing the same lately. So I don't even know what I should do. If I should just spend it on a guy in the start rotation or get somebody or get a lot of guys in the pen. I'm going to have to make up my mind soon though because it is getting out of fucking control, man. I'm literally going to just go to the pen as soon as these guys come out. If Corey Kluber or David Price start my game, I swear to God, I'm just going to go to the bullpen, put like Billy Wagner in, just let my relievers take over the game because I can't even handle it anymore. Then look at Kluber. As I'm fucking talking over this guy, this guy is just giving up hits everywhere you look. I don't even know how I still have the lead because this guy was getting a hold of me early in this one. Pools, man. I don't know. Fucking Pools with that 86 fielding. That didn't really come into play right there as that squeezes by him. That actually went down as a hit, which was kind of weird if you ask me. 
And then the next guy is just flying out, thank God. So I'm getting out of this inning unscathed, even though this guy was just crushing the cover off the ball every single time he was up at the plate. And, dude, somebody commented on one of my videos the other day and was saying that, is it just me or is anyone else finding it harder to hit? And I really didn't know what he meant by harder to hit just by, like, he was swinging and missing or if he just wasn't getting hits when he was making good contact. But if you're talking about not getting hits when you're getting good contact... I agree more than I've ever agreed with anything, man. Honest to God, I find that I'm just getting hits on, like, terrible swings. Even my opponents, you saw a couple of videos ago, dude literally didn't get a hit on a good swing up until the very last, up until, like, the 13th inning when he hit that walk-off with Edgar Martinez. And sometimes in this game, I wasn't getting the best contact, or I was a, a couple times, uh, I wasn't getting the best contact, but they were dropping for hits. And this guy was getting um, this guy was getting crazy contact, like amazing contact on Kluber early in this game, and he wasn't getting that many base hits. And just in every game in general, I feel like I am right on the ball, good swing and everything, and it's just like a ground out or some shit. But if I'm swinging late, and I may not even have the best contact, the ball is just landing in the outfield for a base hit. So I don't know what the hell is going on, but I do agree with that 100%, man. We are in trouble. That is an understatement that I am in trouble in the fourth inning. The bases were loaded. Kluber, I had enough. I was so steamed, man. I was so heated at this point in the game. I was right. If this guy was going to score another run after this walk that I just gave up, I was going to throw the controller through the TV, and that was no joke. Luckily, I am able to get out of it. Billy Wagner strikes out the last guy of that inning, and even though it was a 1-1 game, it felt like this guy was leading 10-1. This is what I'm talking about. Andre Dawson gets... Fucking all of that ball, and that's just a line out to Ellsbury in center field. So I don't even know what the hell is going on. Luckily, though, Gary Carter steps up to the plate next and gets a base hit of his own. So I don't know. I just was agreeing with that guy's statement. That is, it, shit is just being weird lately. I don't know if it's just me, if anyone else is noticing that, but I find like I'm getting a, amazing contact on some of these fucking balls. And they are just going right to, like, not even, like, I'm, what I'm talking about is I'm getting amazing contact and the ball won't even be, like, a fucking lot, frozen rope or something. It'll just be a little shitty ground ball or something. It won't even be steamed off the bat. But I don't know. That, may, that might just be me. So I'm putting Carter Caps in because this guy was putting some flamethrowers in two middle innings of this game. He had enough of John Lester, too. I was getting a hold of John Lester. He put in Jabba Chamberlain, I believe. I got Mookie leading this inning off. So I need to get something going because, like I said, I felt like this guy had the lead by a lot. And Mookie, first swing not good, second swing not good. But I'm looking to bounce back. High in the air and deep to left center field. Ellsbury going back, but he has no chance to make the play. It's off the wall. Around second, he'll try for third, the relay throw, and he'll get there. He'll look to bounce back after striking out his last time up. And this is a big-time strikeout situation right here, so they're going to... This ball gets down. Let's see if they try to score. And they'll extend their lead even further as the run's in to score from third. Swing and misses. He was way in front of that one. Line to the right side, and that'll get down for a base hit. Oh, and the throw back in is a wild one. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard. Well hit the other way, and it's into the gap. And now Ellsbury will get it in off the wall. And the run is in to score from second. And they're going to hold him to a single. He's grounded out and struck out in two trips. Line drive to center field. Ellsbury is there and that should be deep enough to score the run and a relay home and he's safe play I feel like MLB has been against me the past couple games but finally I am getting something going the bats come alive in the sixth inning and I needed something like that I needed like I needed something like that to happen so damn bad because I felt like this guy had the momentum I feel like this guy had a huge lead but I'm putting Fernando Rodney in. If you ask me, the live series Fernando Rodney is just as good as the flashback Fernando Rodney. I know the, the flashback Fernando Rodney has an extra pitch and he may have better velocity and all that shit. But man, the circle change on this guy is disgusting. It is nasty. Nobody can hit this shit, man. I'm telling you. Plus, he has he still has like a 98 mile an hour fastball. Plus, the two seamer is nasty as well. This guy's just a beast. So I put him in, hoping he could shut this game down for good. Because 
Man, I don't know. Late innings in the past couple games have not been kind to me. Altuve is able to get an infield single right there. And with two down, Cargo is back up. Altuve stole second. So I'm looking to drive in another run. But Cargo is just grounding out to Machado. I'm sure that was a very nice play by Machado at short right there. So I'm going into the eighth. And I'm going to the bottom of the seventh. And Fernando Rodney is still on the mound, man. Like, that circle change it just falls. It just falls right off the table. And Machado is grounding out to lead. Or the second guy in this inning, Machado is grounding out. And then the next guy coming to the plate, Ellsbury, is just grounding out as well. So I'm getting out of that inning unscathed, man. It is just... I am getting very fucking nervous late in games for the past couple games. It's just been falling apart for me lately. And this is what I'm talking about. That was a terrible swing. Maybe not a terrible swing. Like, I made good contact on that probably, but I was very late on that. Roy Junkie gets on base with the single. So, I don't know. It may just be me, though. Fernando Rodney is still in the game. And this guy wasn't getting good contact at all against him, man. Like what I was saying before with Kluber, this guy was just pounding the cover off the ball. But once I put Rodney in this game, this guy wasn't making barely any good contact. He was a little bit, but for the most part, he was just swinging and missing as he goes down right there with Cespedes. Fast forward to the ninth because I didn't do shit in the top of the ninth. So get your po pause and go get your popcorn because it is going to get interesting he starts this inning off with the single up the gut steroid junkie should have got that so this is going to be bad this is going to be very very bad pool saves the game he saves the game if i've ever seen saving the game Pujols, a hundred million percent saves the game. That would have been a double at least. Dude from first base maybe would have scored, but he would have had two guys in the scoring position at least. And then Reggie. That, I got away with one right there. Man, that was a fastball right down the middle. And Reggie Jackson, he pinch hit, is just flying out to Altuve to end this game. That was insane, man. Pujols legitimately saved this game, making up for the early gaff at first base. Fernando Rodney gets player of the game. That is more than well-deserved, man. This guy was just lights out when he came in this game. He only got one hit for the four innings he was pitching, and Kluber gave up like seven in the four innings he was pitching. 